Hi class. By now we have learned how to conduct multi-group path analysis and multi-group CFA. It's time to put them together and learn how to perform multi-group latent factor SEM analysis. This is the exercise I asked you to try last week. The research objective is to examine how internalized homophobia, attachment anxiety, and relationship quality impact the level of domestic violence among lesbian and bisexual women. This study was conducted by a colleague of mine, and I was the mastologist. As shown in this conceptual diagram, there are four latent factors. Among them, attachment, anxiety, and relationship quality were each measured by three indicators. And the internalized homophobia and physical abuse by partner were measured by two indicators each. Their indicators are mostly parcels created from the same instrument. For example, IHP1, IHP2 are two parcels created from items on the instrument called. Nungerser homosexuality attitude inventory that measures internalized homophobia. ECR P1, P2, and P3 are parcels created from the anxious attachment subscale from the experiences in close relationships revised. The purpose of this exercise is to examine whether the proposed latent factor SEM model. Is invariant for people of different education levels. Educational level is dichotomized into two levels: those who had college education or higher, or in the high ed group. Those who did not have any college education were placed in the low ed group. We are going to use the raw data for this analysis. I showed you in a separate video how to prepare and get data ready for M plus analysis. One thing worth mentioning is that if raw data are used, M plus allows you to save the data of individual groups in separate files for multi group comparison. But you need to make sure that all data files share identical structure. It also works if data of all groups are saved in the same data file. In that case, it's important to have a grouping variable. For example, if the comparison is between males and females, there needs to be a gender variable in the data set. In my example, I have a variable called age level that has one for low ed and two for high ed. My demonstration of the analysis starts with one data file that consists of all groups. The primary reason is to show you how to complete step one if you have all groups in one data file to begin with. In the past analysis and the CFA examples, I started with separate data files and combined them together for step two and step three. But it is too much trouble in multi-group SEM models with latent factors. Since latent factor SEM models use CFA as the measurement component, and the pass analysis as the structural component, the analysis is consisted of two phases. In the measurement phase, we want to know whether the relations between factors and indicators differ across populations. In the structural phase, we want to examine whether the theoretically interesting path among factors differ across populations. So I start with the measurement model in my command file. I read the raw data file in the data block. Then, in the variable block, I name all variables in the data set by the order they appeared in the file, and use the keyword grouping. Is to name the variable that divides the sample into groups, and label the groups accordingly in the parentheses. Remember, the grouping variable is not considered as a variable used in the analysis. That's why you see the edge level 
in the list of all variables, but not among the variables in the use variables R. In the analysis block, make sure the type is M group. In the model block, write a by statement for each latent factor and mark the reference variable by add one. Be clear that we are actually doing an unconstrained model in which the two groups are estimated freely as individual groups. In other words, we need to repeat the model structure for each group in order to release the equality constraint on factor loadings. And that is why I have model low ed and model high ed here. One thing to note is that when raw data files are used, you cannot call the models of individual groups as model G1, model G2, as we did when summary data files are used. We need to name the models using the labels created in the grouping line. So I called my model low ed and model high ed. Save the file and run the analysis. In the output file, we can see the model fit indices are pretty good, except for the high model chi-square value of 154.12. Also, the chi-square value of the low ed group is 81.7 which is higher than that of the high ad group. This information tells two things. First, we need to reduce the model chi-square value of the individual groups, which in turn will improve the overall model fit. Second, model fit of both groups can be better, but the low ad group need more attention. Remember, even though we did not have separate analysis for individual groups, the output file provides multiplication indices separately for each group. Pay attention to the multiplication indices for the with statement because the by statements are for the factor indicator relationships that are hypothesized based on theories and changes should not be dictated by the multiplication indices. In this section, it is clear that for the low ad group, the only change that can be justified is to add a correlation between the error variances of RELWP2 and RELWP1 because they happen to be two indicators created from the same instrument to measure the same factor. For the high ad group, the same change is suggested. So I add this line in my command file to both groups. Yes, I know I said we need to make changes sequentially one at a time. Indeed, I'm making one change for each group. My trick is that rather than running analysis of two individual groups separately, I put them together and run step one in a simultaneous fashion based on the information of the unconstrained model. This type of operation requires one to have a very clear understanding about the tasks at hand because not only groups are analyzed simultaneously, but also step one is completed almost as part of step two. Run the file after save the changes. You can see the model chi-score is reduced, but is there any way to make it better? According to the modification indices, none of the suggested changes can be justified for the low ad group. For the high ad group, a correlation can be added between the errors of ECRP2 and ECRP1. I decide to make this change in my command file and run it one more time. The model chi-score is still significant, but there are no more changes we can make to improve the model fit. 
At this point, we completed step one by making changes and improving model fit for individual groups. Since the two groups are combined in this analysis, the model fit is what we have for the unconstrained measurement model. The model fit indices are good. The significant model chi-score is partly due to the large sample size. Now we need to estimate a constraint model. In the command file, simply remove the repeated model structure from model low add and model high add. Here we have the constraint measurement model. Save the change and run the analysis. We have a model chi-square of 141.47 which has an increase of 22.36 from the unconstrained model. And this change in chi-score value is statistically significant, given a degree freedom of 7. Now we concluded step 2 with a finding that the constraint and unconstrained models have significant differences. To start step three, we go to the modification indices of the output file of the constraint model. Be clear that in this step, we need to evaluate the modification indices for the by statement to see which factor loadings to be released from the equality constraint. After evaluating the suggestions, the first change is to release the constraint on the loading from attachment anxiety to ECRP3. This change was suggested for both groups and would reduce the model chi-score by 8.2. I can release this constraint by adding this relationship to both model low add and model high add. Save and run the analysis. In the output, we see a lowered chi-square value. Let's see if there are other loadings that appear different for the two groups. In the modification indices, the only change that seems justified is to release the loading from physical abuse to CORCTP2. The change would reduce the model chi-score for the low add group by 4.12 and for the high add group by 6.6. .6. I make this change in my command file, save and run. Further analysis shows no additional changes are acceptable. Now we have our final measurement model in which two factor loadings are released from the quality constraint, the others remained invariant between the two groups. The model fit indices, as summarized on the slide, are pretty good. Again, the significant model chi-score is partly due to the large sample size used in the study. We are done with the measurement phase of this analysis. In the next video, we're going to continue with the structural phase of the analysis.